And I love inviting people in on a Saturday morning to tell us what they've been doing in this great city of ours, because there's so many people out there giving their time to help others. And today we're joined by two of them, by Taz Verdi and Serena Lola, who are both involved in something called Heston West, and Heston West Big Local indeed. Um, and they've come here from the far west to tell us more about that today. Taz and Serena, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much, Robert. Let me begin with you, Tez, because um, you're, you're involved in this kind of full time, aren't you? You're a project manager. W what does it actually involve? My role really is to uh, encourage, inspire um, sort of local people to get involved with their community. And a lot of it is looking at what sort of projects can we do to increase participation and, and the Big Local itself is a national programme. So we're one of 150 areas. So Heston West Big Local given a, a lottery grant. So there'll be, there'll be big locals throughout kind of London or throughout the country or whatever. There are, yeah. But each Big Local is very unique to and tailored to their area. Right. So which makes the whole national programme quite fascinating. So each area was given over a million pounds wow. to spend over a 10 year period. So local residents who direct where that money goes. So they decide what kind of things they want to be involved in. Absolutely, yes. So it's local residents and they're the ones who direct the whole pot of money over a 10-year period. And then my role really is to sort of facilitate that so that the local people's voices are heard. So what kind of activities are we talking about in your instance over there in Heston? So in Heston West Big Local, we do things for our projects are all intergenerational. Well, most of them are. So we're trying to encourage young people and older people and families to all come together. So some of the things that we are doing is like family cooking clubs, do things you like... You don't want to come around and cook for me. <laughs> well, I think after a couple of years, I might have brushed up my skills, so maybe I could. <laughs> and we also have projects like the a youth filmmaking club, so where young people really get the chance to, make, uh, to learn their skills and into film and craft. We do music. Uh, we also do intergenerational walking football. Do you? Do yes. you have a base? Are you based in one place or is it across the area? So Heston West Big Local doesn't have its own base, but we do use facilities in the local community. We use Cranford Community College. Yep. Cranford Community College is a fantastic school that the school's leadership has enabled our community group to thrive. So we're very grateful for our local schools to give their, their premises for our projects. And also Barclay Academy, which is a primary school. We also use a local community centre as well. We use local spaces to help deliver our activities. And you also use local volunteers, of course, and that's where Serena comes in. Serena Lona, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. So how did you get involved in this and why did you get involved? So it's actually a pretty interesting story. I was sitting in a media lesson at school right. and then this guy walks in, Taz, of course, yep. and he's like, right, we've got this filmmaking club that we're starting up. And so I was kind of figuring out what I wanted to do in my life. And I'm like, OK, I always used to make these weird little YouTube videos in my room. So like, let me try out this filmmaking club. And so then I went and... Um, I met all these amazing people and it was a really fun club. You know, there was adults, there was young people and we were just creating our own little... And was there films. equipment and stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, there was professional cameras, tripods and originally we were based in the community centre but then we moved to the school, Cranford Community College. And so you, that's how you got involved but what's kept you involved? I think it's the people. The people there are just so friendly and welcoming and I've just made so many friends there and it's just been a real learning experience for me and also it's helped me gain so many skills that I can use later on in life and I just stayed because it was fun. So how many days a week or how does it work? What's your kind of commitment? Um, so originally when I started I'd come every single Sunday for the filmmaking club but now that I have exams and stuff it's kind of calm down a bit and so I attend maybe the odd event like a cleanup day where we go out picking litter off the streets. Oh really? So yeah. it isn't just filmmaking? For oh you. no no there's loads of different things you know we have like Red Nose Day events we do stuff for children in need we do community clubs like um, as Taz said the walking football we have an art club there's a bingo club for over 60s there's literally just so much. And do you see it having an effect? Do you see communities getting closer if you like? Yes, I think through activities, so what we do, sort of, Robert, is through activities, we then encourage people to start volunteering. So they come along to an activity, they start to enjoy themselves. So gardening or cooking or whatever it might 100%. be. 100%. I mean, gardening is a new one that we're about to start very shortly because we just built a couple of allotment beds in the community. Right. We are definitely doing projects that are enabling people to then say, well, I really enjoy participating, but what can I do now to give back to the community? And that's what we offer, plenty of opportunities for all age groups 
groups to give back. And all communities in London are diverse because that's the nature of this city. But I know that that particular area has people from all different communities. Do they mix together well, would you say? Yes, I'm going to say yes, because we've seen a massive improvement, especially since we formated about four years ago, that all different groups are now working together, coming together. We have a partnership board, so a board made of local residents who steer the project. And our board is probably the most diverse board in the community, really? in probably in the country. People from all backgrounds, from Asian, Somalian, English, European. So we're very, very lucky and fortunate that we now have board members that reflect our our community in general. And is it, you talk about cross-generational, is it easier to get younger people or older people? Are there people who are tough to reach? Is it, I don't know, are there more females than males? Often these things kind of work in certain areas, but it's tough to get young boys in or whatever it might be. We have more females involved. Yeah. I, I look at the statistics, but we are doing quite a lot getting young boys involved and we have a lot of projects there and even ones are starting now to encourage them. We do have young boys taking on leadership roles as well. Like we've got a young boy who's taken on a football club, he's running his own sessions. So we are encouraging that, but you're right, there is always a agenda and balance and we're trying to balance it up through our activities. Do, I mean, did you find that, that there were more girls when you were first going? Yeah, there was actually. I think the initial kind of starting group was all girls and maybe one really? boy. And so, yeah, I think, I don't know what it is. It's just girls seem to be more drawn to it. They maybe. do. And, and draw seemed, girls seemed, I mean, because we do this every week. And, and I would say that it's, obviously, there, there are both genders come in, but it is predominantly female people, particularly who go out and volunteer and get involved in these kind of things. You're right. But we have seen uh, lots of guys and boys and girls and everybody get involved. And it has been increased in terms of, of male participation. And we are getting more male adults involved. And how we do that is a lot of fathers right. and the children involved involved or grandfathers so that that's the way to increase our participation is it's through the young people and asking young people to get involved their families involved with our projects how far into the 10 years of, of money are you we've hit halfway <laughs> how much you got left <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> hit halfway we're five years in our 10-year funding and what do we know what happens after the, 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 the <laughs> that's a good question so we're actually working on our legacy at the moment about so turning into a, a charity yep. at the moment we're just a community organization and we're also hoping to set up a, a, a CIC as a film company because recently we've been given a lot of work for, by different organisations to create films. For example, in the summer holidays, oh, sorry, before the summer holidays this year, we created anti-knife crime awareness films aimed at year six students in partnership with the London Borough of Hounslow, the Metropolitan Police and the Mayor of London. And local young people wrote the scripts and the films are now have been out and been shown throughout the whole borough of Hounslow at year six students, which is amazing. These kind of things and those big issues, it is so important that, the com that they come from within the community, isn't it? Because you're not going to get solutions to problems imposed from above. It's got to come from within the community. Serena, do you think you're going to continue volunteering as, you, as, your, as your kind of life and education and stuff progresses? I really hope I continue to volunteer. It's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Really? Yeah, it changed me as a person. I used to be that, you know, that shy little kid who sat at the back of the class and I know didn't one. talk. Yeah, <laughs> that was me. And now I'm I'm on now the radio. You're here. I'm on, on the radio. radio. <laughs> yeah, so it's such a surreal experience, but yeah, it's changed me, so I really hope I continue volunteering. Well, that's a fantastic advert, I guess. If people are interested in, in, in Heston West, t t how can they find out more? Absolutely. If they go to our website, which is hestonwest.org, yep. they can find out more about us. And we've been hearing about that from Taz and Serena. It's 10.30 here on The Robert Elm Show. Thank you both very, very much. But now it's time for the news.